So we originally thought there were four people in that June 2016 meeting at Trump Tower. That number grew to six by the time Morning Joe signed off on Friday and then continued to metastasize to seven. We now know that along with Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner, there was Russian lawyer Natalia Veselnitskaya, British publicist Rob Goldstone, who told the AP he was present, a translator. There was also Renat Akhmetshin, a Russian-born American citizen who served in the Soviet military and has lobbied on issues important to the Kremlin. And other news out outlets are reporting that a possible eighth person attended as well. The New York Times wrote this weekend about Akhmetshin as a skilled practitioner in the muscular Russian version of what is American politics known as opposition research. Akhmetshin also told the Associated Press that Vitselnitskaya brought with her a plastic folder with printed out documents that detailed what she believed was the flow of illicit Russian funds to the Democrats. According to Akhmetshin, Vitselnitskaya presented the contents of the documents to the Trump associates and suggested that making the information public could help the campaign. Also this weekend, Veselnitskaya told the Wall Street Journal that she had spoken with the office of Russia's top prosecutor and was in regular contact with Russian authorities about her U.S. lobbying efforts. But Jay Sekulow, a member of President Trump's legal team, insists absolutely nothing happened. Do you know for sure everyone who was at that meeting with Donald Trump Jr.? No, I don't represent Donald Trump Jr., and I do not know everyone for sure that was at that meeting. Uh, and the president was not at the meeting. I can tell you he was not there. The president wasn't aware of the meeting and did not attend it. Doesn't it show intent and willingness on the part of Don Jr. and Jared and Paul Manafort to, be, to collude with the Russians? And let me just point out, Natalia Veselnitskaya was not just some Russian off the street. She had close ties to uh, people in the Kremlin. Well, number one, if there was the discussion was going to be about if it was going to be about Russian uh, opposition research that a Russian lawyer had, the fact is those goes on. You know that goes on in campaigns all the time. Opposition research is a big part of campaigning. It, does, it just doesn't gave go you the on example. with the Russians all the time, Jay. Well, no, but look, this was here's what happened. First of all, nothing happened. Isn't it also important whether or not it's legal, whether or not it's wrong, whether or not it's ethical? Well. I'm, you're conflating, so you're conflating, Jake, three perspectives here. The legality, was the meeting and what took place legal or, or not? We, of course, and as almost every legal expert said, it's not illegal. And then you're trying to put a, a, a moral, ethical aspect to it. And it's easy to do that in 2020 hindsight, but not when you're in the middle of a campaign. That, that, that's just not true. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to really, I've known Jay for a long time and I've liked Jay for a long time, but there are so many uh, uh, false statements there. Uh, talk about conflating things, it's staggering. And Jeremy Peters, if you look at what Jay Sekulow was forced to go out and say last weekend on the Sunday shows, if you look at the statement that the President of the United States signed off on, with all the president's men around him on Air Force One coming back from Europe, lying, lying to the New York Times, lying to the American people, saying this meeting was just about adoption, and then the next day lying about the people that were in it, then going on a TV show that basically is state-run television and being asked at the end of that TV show, is there anything else that we don't know about? And Don right. Jr. saying, that's it. And then the next day, we find out another person attended the meeting. And then the next day, we find out that somebody connected with the KGB that basically was an intel officer was at the meeting. And then the next day, finding out that there are two other people at the meeting. These people keep getting caught in their lies day after day after day. And Jay Sekulow and the President of the United States keep saying, nothing to see here move right. along, move along. It, it's, right. it's like actually a character out of The Simpsons. There is something to see here. And even their own base know that. 
That's right, and I think, Joe, as you said over the weekend, that's why you start to hear more and more Republicans saying, okay, this, this just doesn't pass the sniff test. Yes, opposition research is, is a fundamental part of any campaign, but not from a Russian operative, not from a hostile foreign power. And the lack of acknowledgement by Trump or any of the people around Trump that maybe this was not the best decision, that maybe it, 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 this didn't show the best judgment, this total lack of any ability uh, to have introspection and contrition on this is, is consistent with a pattern of what we've seen from Donald Trump and his people for a long time. It's always someone else's fault. It's the fault of the, the fake news media for not explaining this properly, for conflating a bunch of things, as Jay Sekulow tried to say yesterday. It's, it's Loretta Lynch's fault. It's the DNC's fault. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, if Donald Trump is on the outs, if Donald Trump is down and something bad is happening to him, it's always because someone else is cheating or lying. And it, they, they have never, ever been able to accept responsibility and say, you know what, maybe we shouldn't have handled things this way. Well, you know, Donald Trump in a tweet this weekend tries to blame it on the fake news media, but of course, an overwhelming number of Americans believe that Don Jr.'s meeting with the Russians was inappropriate. David Ignatius, we heard Jay Sekulow also say that all, the, here there you go, 26% think appropriate, 63% think that meeting was not appropriate. And David Ignatius, you even have Jay Sekulow saying the overwhelming majority of legal scholars say that there's absolutely nothing illegal about that meeting. That's not what I've been hearing. It's not what I've been hearing out of the White House. It's not what I've been hearing from Capitol Hill. There are a lot of people inside the White House and a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill afraid that at least one member in that meeting put themselves in grave legal jeopardy by even being there and not reporting it. Well, and, and, and maybe most important of all, it's not Jay Sekulow's call, whether it's legal or not. Uh, we have a criminal investigation underway conducted by one of the best prosecutors in America. Uh, and this is what happens when a, a criminal investigation begins to accelerate. New facts emerge, people begin to worry about their positions, they disclose things that were not disclosed earlier. I've heard people in the White House say, well, you know, these emails with Don Jr., that's really the toughest stuff that we've got to deal with. Well, we'll see. If that's true, if, if that's yeah. really the worst that there is, we'll see. But in an investigation like that, new material keeps churning to the top, and that's part of what we're seeing. Yeah, Mika, All I've right, yet to talk to the first person Joe. who thinks that the worst days are ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, who, I get who, go it. ahead. That's Mika. okay. The Senate puts health care on hold. Uh, passage of the Rep Republicans' plan was already uncertain. And now a planned vote this week is postponed until after Senator John McCain recovers from surgery. Will that help or hurt the changes of the bill uh, passing? Also this morning, we'll bring in Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow, New York Times White House correspondent Glenn Thrush, and NBC's Tom Brokaw. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.